Premier Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. Local waste management business Interwaste launched South Africa's first refuse-derived fuel plant earlier this month, which aims to divert waste from landfill by creating fuel from non-recyclable materials such as plastic. David Oliveira tells us more. Interwaste's new RDF plant, which was imported from China last year, is located in the company's depot in Germiston, Gauteng and is currently producing a solid recovered fuel in the form of extruded logs or pellets, as well as shredded and baled fluff. The current plant, which is the first of four lines, is expected to convert at least 12,000 tonnes a year of waste to alternative fuel for use in the South African manufacturing sector, helping alleviate local dependence on carbon-based electricity generation. This plant is designed to create refuse-derived fuels from waste. So it's separation at source of high calorific or high energy value waste that are otherwise not recyclable are brought to this facility here where they're then shredded into a fuel that can be used in the cement industry, in power stations and general industry. Nichols explains that RDF involves combustible fraction of non-hazardous dry industrial and municipal waste which could be extracted and used as fuel. In order to be able to penetrate a range of markets, we have developed a range of fuels. So the, the fuel over here behind me is what we call our fluff, and that's solid shredded fuel with a very good calorific value of between uh, 24 and 27. And that fuel typically is blown into the com combustion unit. So blown into a cement kiln, for example, or a boiler, where it combusts very, very quickly, a residence time of less than three seconds. And so all the energy is liberated very, very quickly. For applications that, that require heating over a longer period, we then look at replacing uh, coal uh, nuts or lump coal with an extruded uh, variety of this material. So we'll take this material and we'll extrude it into a log and that then can go into a boiler system that would typically use coal. To ensure the economic feasibility of the project, Nichols highlights that Interway studied the European model for RDF particularly in the UK. The economics of this project are very, very different to what happens in Europe. In Europe they have high disposal fees in excess of 2,000 Rand a tonne. In South Africa the disposal fees are around about 200 Rand a tonne. So there's not a subsidy from the gate fee of any significance. So instead of being able to construct a 150, 200 million Rand plant that, source, that separates mixed waste uh, in order to, uh, to produce the fuels, we even decided to invest in people on our client sites, separating the waste when it's still clean. And so we are able then to have a much lower cost of capital and a much, much higher uh, grade of fuel. Our on-site division currently employs 400 people. Um, and I would say that the continued sustainability of that division through the, the, the peaks and troughs of the recycling market will be cemented through uh, this process. By employing more individuals at the customer's facilities to separate materials at the source, Interwaste was able to reduce the capital costs of producing RDF by 80%. Further, Nichols highlights that the fuel produced by Interwaste has, in some cases, doubled the calorific content of its European counterparts, which produces an RDF with a calorific content between 16 megajoules per kilogram and 18 megajoules per kilogram, while Interwaste's best product achieved a calorific content of 31 megajoules per kilogram. Other news making headlines this week. AMSA's competition settlement is part of a bigger image makeover to win steel protection. Survey shows wearable technology buy-in and South Africans are encouraged to participate in nominating a new public protector. Steel producer ArcelorMittal South Africa has made a 1.5 billion rand proposal to the Competition Commission to settle all outstanding matters against the company. Going forward, we cannot revert to ArcelorMittal to our old data. So in the long steel environment, we have significant competition. We can gain score. And for a market that is a 2 million ton market, that is a 3 million ton capacity, natural forces will determine a fair price. While market acceptance of wearable technology is on the increase, regulation and policy frameworks surrounding the use of this fast-growing technology in the workplace needs to be discussed. So wearables really is, refers to any clothing or accessory that incorporates computer or advanced technology. So it, it's from armbands like the Fitbit through to Google Glasses all the way to, to smart sensors you know, um, or health tracking sensors. And our survey really was about understanding what people's willingness is to wear wearables and then also to share the data with a third party, whether that third party is their employer 
or some healthcare provider. Non-profit organization Corruption Watch has launched the Wo Mzanzi public awareness campaign to engage South Africans to actively participate in this year's process of nominating and appointing a new public protector. The, the campaign will, will consist of, of, uh, of three elements. Uh, raising awareness, a, a public education uh, dimension if you like, um, public participation in the nomination process, the, the, the interviewing process and, uh, and the appointment process and then uh, transparency in the process overall without which we could not uh, secure public participation. That's Creamy Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.